Hello, and welcome to our video on ProPresenter Scoreboard. My name is Andy. I'm a technical support engineer at Formeco, and today I'll be walking you through an overview of the ProPresenter Scoreboard software. In front of you, you will see the scoreboard interface. This is what allows you to control all of the content that will go out to your scoreboard. We're going to first go over the different areas in the scoreboard software, and we'll do a deep dive on a set up from a fresh install of the software. First, in the upper dead center portion of the screen here, you will see the scoring interface. Here, this allows you to score, change time, set names, do timeout clocks, possession, and all of your stats for a football game. Is important to note that this software can be used in multiple sports, but today we are focusing on football. Up in the upper left, you are going to see the output that should be going to your scoreboard. Again here, I've done a full setup of the software already, and you will see a custom score template, rotating advertisements, a graphic logo, and I can send any number of pieces of content up to this at any time. In the top left up here, you are going to see your clears. This will clear any content that you have put up on the board in specific areas as you click it. Up here in the dead center, you're going to see your ads. This is going to bring in advertisements, a player module, any overlays, or any graphics that you wish to put up onto the board. Down here in the bottom center, you're going to see the graphics bin. This is going to have playlists of media that you can play to any location that you've created on the scoreboard. Over here on the left, you're going to see overlays. Overlays take up the most important portion of the screen and will therefore override everything else. Here I have put my live video inputs, but you could put important announcements, raffle winnings, anything you would like to take priority can go over here in the overlay section. Right here in the dead center are macros. Macros is a way of doing multiple things, playing content, moving scoreboards, anything like that with a single click. We will go over all of these elements here on a fresh instance of Scoreboard. To get to a fresh version of Scoreboard, I'm going to open a different configuration. I'm going to hit Open Configuration, and then select the new one I created right here. You're going to want to make sure that when you have a configuration you like, you, that you have it saved in a way that you understand. So this scoreboard 2023, June 14th, is today's new scoreboard that I'm going to create. I'm going to hit open, and it will come up with a fresh version of scoreboard. No media in the graphics bin, a default score template, no overlays set up, and no ads. So we're going to start from scratch. The first and most important thing you need to know about ProPresenter Scoreboard are there are two principles that control all of ProPresenter Scoreboard. The first is going to be zones. If I hit this pencil icon up next to where it says Football Scoreboard and click on the Zones tab, you will see I currently have no zones built out. A zone is a place where I can build a piece of content and send it to on the board. I can build as many zones as I want. To create a zone, I'm going to hit this plus button down here on the left, and a new zone will be created. Once I click on that zone, over here on the left, it will tell me its exact size and coordinates in pixels. It will give me a name, and it will allow me to assign it a color. 
So the first zone I'm going to create is going to be a full screen zone. So I will type in full screen. And then I want to make it the full size of my board. It's important to know that the size of your board is going to be set in the settings when it comes to you. If you go to Pro Presenter Scoreboard up at the top, hit Settings, and Display, it will show you the exact pixel dimensions of your board. In this case, I'm running a board that is 800 pixels wide by 420 pixels tall. So I know that that is the size of content that I can send to this board. If I X out of that, I can then take this full screen zone I can drag it and make it bigger, or I can do it by exact pixel dimensions. Once I have created my full screen zone to the size I want it, I can then create another zone again by hitting the plus button. Now that I've got another zone, I can do the same. Rename it. This one is going to be my video zone. I can readjust it to wherever I want on the screen. I can select back and forth between my zones. So this video zone, I want to be an exact 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I'm going to locate it again up in the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to drag it down. Down here at the bottom, you're going to see the scoreboard template that you currently have made. You can hide and show that by clicking the check mark. So here, I can see that my height will be about 290 pixels above that scoreboard template. I can bring it out to wherever I need it to. For an exact 16 by 9 aspect ratio, the width is going to be 516 pixels. You can look up a aspect ratio calculator to determine what aspect ratio and what pixel size to make your video zone. The reason we make it a 16 by 9 aspect ratio is so that any video content you play to this zone will play without being stretched or chopped off. Now that I've got this zone, I want to differentiate it from the full screen zone when I'm selecting them later. So to do that, I'm going to change its color. I'm going to click on the color and choose a different color. I'm going to choose the cyan. Once I've done that, you will see that that zone now is colored a different color. When selecting a zone later on, you will see that it allows you easier differentiation between the two zones that we have currently. Let's make another zone. We're going to make some zones for our advertisements. I've got another zone now made, and I'm going to start it at an X of 516, which is where this previous zone stopped. A Y of 0 will take it all the way to the top, and I can make my width however wide I need it. The rest of this area is 284 pixels wide. I know this zone it has a height of 290. So in order to make this half that tall, I'm going to make it 145. That's going to mean that I can make another zone with the exact same information. and place it at 145 and have two ad zones on the right hand side allowing me to optimize how many ads I can play at once. 
I'm going to rename these guys. So zone four here, um, we'll have be add to. Zone three, I'm going to title add one. And again, I'm going to change their colors as well. Sometimes it won't save the color, and you'll have to do it again. At this point, I have currently got four separate zones. Each of these zones is a place I can play content, whether that be an advertisement, a graphic, or even a macro. So, we've gone over adver or we've gone over zones. <coughs> zones are the first of the two principles. The second principle is going to be layers. So I'm going to hit the pencil icon to get out of my configurator, and we'll talk about layers. There are four layers in ProPresenter Scoreboard. The bottom layer, with the lowest priority, is going to be advertisements. Advertisements are content that play on a loop based on images that you put in a folder on your hard drive. This allows you to passively play advertisements consistently and generate ad reports for your advertisers. Graphics is going to be where you play most of your content from, and that's the second priority in your layers. Graphics are anything played from this bin down here and anything played from macros. Anything played in a graphic that overlaps an advertisement will cover it. The third layer is scoreboard, and that's your actual score template down here. A score template can be any size of your board you want, and you can have multiple score templates. This one happens to be a lower third and is this blue generic color. It takes up a higher priority than graphics or advertisements. So again, it would play on top of anything underneath it. Overlays take the ultimate priority and they will play over everything. Overlays can be created in any size to cover whatever portion of the screen you want. Let's circle back and go over advertisements. For advertisements, I'm going to click on this pencil icon again and go back into my configurator. Instead of being in the zones tab, we're going to go down to advertisements. To create an advertisement, we're going to hit the plus button down here at the bottom left. And we're going to navigate to a folder. I have a folder right here called ads that's got 11 different advertisers in it. These are standard JPEG images and I'm going to hit open. You're going to see this alert here. This alert is telling me that I have got certain advertisements that are a little bit too large. We'll go over later how to correct this, but for now I'm just going to bypass it by hitting OK. Then I'm going to select a zone where I want these advertisements to play. Once I select a zone, you're going to see all those zones I've already created. I'm going to select Add 1. I need to tell it how long I want it to play. I like about 10 seconds, but you can create whatever time you want. We'll go over Start Index here once I add in my second group of ads. To add in my second link, I'm going to hit the plus icon again. I'm going to navigate to that same folder or a different folder. But in this case, I'm going to do the same folder and hit open. Again, we'll take care of this later. And I'm going to select add to. I'm going to set it for 10 seconds as well. This is where start index comes in. I don't want the same advertisement up on the board in both zones at the same time. 
So if I click Start Index, that's going to enable the Start Index, selecting which piece of advertisement is going to go up first. Zero means it will select the very first one, and one will select the one after that. In this way, when I click the Ads button, you will see two different advertisements. After 10 seconds, you will notice that these guys will rotate, and the one that was below moves up, and a new advertisement comes down here. I also like to put my logo in the video zone in case I'm not showing any video content or animations at that point. I will always have at least something there. I'm going to add, go to documents, and find my logo animation folder or any animation or logo you want. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to select the video zone, but instead of changing every 10 seconds, I decided I want this to change every minute. Now, when I click ads, you will see my animation popping up in the upper left hand corner. That's it. I've added all of my advertisements. If I want to read the ad report, show my advertisers how much time they were on the board, all I have to do is click Ad Report, and it will show me how many impressions and how long it was up on the board for that particular day. Today is the 14th, so I can show how many times this information was up on the board. That is advertisements. Next, we're going to go over graphics. So I'm going to exit out of my configurator and concentrate on my graphics bin right here. If your graphics bin is missing, like this, all you have to do is click graphics up at the top and it will appear again. And you can drag it up and down as needed. You can even cover the scoring interface entirely if you want. Over here on the left is going to be your playlists. To create a new playlist, I'm going to hit the plus button and create new playlist. I'm going to title this playlist animations. Once I've created that playlist, over here is the content that would be in there. I haven't added any content yet, so I want to hit the plus button in this area. I want to select video image and navigate to where I have any animations. I'm going to select color flash, and this is one of my animation packages that was provided. Once I've selected the folder or an individual piece of content, I can hit open and all of those pieces of content will come in. The only thing I have left to do is tell that playlist where I want to play. To select this, I'm going to select a zone down here at the bottom and select the zone I want to play that content in. I'm going to select video zone for this. Now, if my team gets a touchdown, all I have to do is click touchdown here and that content will play. I click clear graphics and it goes away. Inside of graphics I can also create group folders. A group folder is just going to be a folder of playlists. It's that simple. Once I've created that I can rename it. If I have football and soccer using the same stadium, I can have a group of football playlists and a group of soccer playlists. That way your soccer playlists aren't in the way during your football season and vice versa. Once I'm inside that, all I have to do is create a playlist 
and that playlist will be part of that group folder. Macros are also a part of graphics. To create a macro, I'm going to click the pencil icon again, go to my configurator, and then go to macros. Once in macros, I'm going to create a new one with the plus icon. I can drag a piece of content from my graphics bin up into my graphic or into my macro and rename it. Once I've done that, I can tell it what actions over here on the right I want to take. So my first action I want is I want to clear scoreboard and overlays. Anything that would be on top of this macro when I play it. I tell it where I want it to go and how long I want to go. We'll do this one for 12 seconds. The reason I chose 12 seconds is if I look down at this animation, you see that it is six seconds long. I want it to play through twice and then clear itself automatically. So we'll do it for 12 seconds. Then I'm going to go down to end behavior and select show scoreboard. This way at the end of the macro, it will automatically show my scoreboard. I'll exit out of the configurator and now my macro is here directly underneath my scoring interface. In order to play it, all I have to do is click on it once. You will see that it will clear the scoreboard, it will play my macro through twice, and then as soon as it's played through twice, it will clear and my scoreboard will come back up. No additional keystrokes are needed. Within macros, you don't actually have to add any content. You can use them to trigger other events. I'm going to make a reset macro. For this reset, I want it to clear everything. I'm assuming that I've put a piece of content a place I don't want it. So I'm going to clear everything. I'm also going to have it show scoreboard and show advertisements. So once it's done clearing, it will bring up my scoreboard and my advertisements, and I'll be back to a default look like I currently have. So let's say I accidentally play this content up in the ad zone, and I know I don't want it there. All I have to do is hit reset, and everything comes back to how it should be. So that's macros. Macros and graphics are all that second layer. Next, we're going to go over scoreboard. This is your scoreboard look and can be completely configured however you want. Again, I'm going to go back to my pencil icon, hit settings, and edit scoreboards. Over on the left, it will show you all of the scoreboards that you have. To create a new one, I can hit the plus button down here, and it will create a blank score template. I could also right click, copy, and then paste. Now I have duplicated a scoreboard, so that way if I'm editing it, I don't accidentally mess up something that was already working. But we're going to start with the blank scoreboard for right now. I'm going to create a box. So up here, these are creating images up here and text boxes. So I created just a box. Then over here on the right are my editing tools. I'm going to go to Object Properties, and I'm going to select a size. 
I can drag it to wherever I want and resize it to whatever I want. So I'm going to make it start at zero and be 800 wide because that's the size of my scoreboard. I'm going to have it start at 290 and be 130 pixels tall because that is what my existing scoreboard is and that's why I've designed my zones around. But you can make it whatever size you want. Now that I've done that, I'm going to choose a color. I can choose any standard color. I have the full color wheel and sliders. If I go to RGB, I can type in a specific hex code if I want. Or an even simpler way of doing it is by using the eyedropper tool. So say I want to use this red from Formeco Sports right here. I can select that red and it will put it in here in my score template. I can save that color by just clicking and dragging it over and this will always keep this color here available for use later on. I can adjust opacity. I can use all of these tools to create whatever color I want. Once I've created this box, this is going to be my background. I can then create a text box over top of it. Drag and resize to whatever size I want. And you'll notice there are yellow lines that will allow you to center. I'm going to type in 88 colon 88 because that's going to take up the most physical space of that font. I don't have to worry about any numbers being outside of that size. I can go to my text, edit over here on the side, center it up, choose a different font. Sometimes you'll have to select it. Resize. and change colors. With a text box I can also put a fill color behind if I want a white background behind it. I can add a line color around with adjusting my line size to create a box. I can also radius the corners and make a rounded shape. Now, in order to get this text box to change data with my score, I need to add a data link. That data link is in Object Properties. I click on it, and then I can choose any of these pieces of information for it to be. For now, I want this to be Game Clock. So I will select Game Clock. Now I can hit Show, and it will show over here on my output and out on the board. This is obviously a rough build just for demonstration purposes. I can get rid of the line color. I can get rid of the fill color. I can add an opacity to my fill color. And change text color at will. Hit show and it will show my changes. You can do a data link for game clock, time of day, a timeout clock, the quarter, what down it is, and the down ordinal number, which would mean 
second, third, as opposed to two or three. How many yards to go? What yard the ball is on? And then any manner of information for the home and visitors team, including their name. In doing that, you will create a scoreboard that will function just like this. If I go out, you will see my score interface right here. Right now, I have a score console attached to it. So I can adjust these numbers, but they will jump back immediately because that is what data is coming from my score console. All I have to do is press game clock start on the score console and it will start. As soon as I stop my score console, it will also stop on the software. I can rename my teams, home and visitor, and I can run my timeout clock. In order to change my scoreboard template, all I have to do is click up here in the upper right hand corner next to new game and select which score template I want. It's that simple. I typed in my team name, hit enter, and it automatically populates in my score template. I can also add logos. I'm going to go back to my scoreboard, and I'm going to add an image. I'm going to go to my folder that's got logos in it, and I can add this generic Eagles logo. That will pop in. I can resize it to whatever size I want. And again, hit show, and you'll see that logo out on the board. In between games, in order to change that logo, all you have to do is select it, go over here to my far right tab, hit change source, and then navigate to a different logo, hit select, and that will show up. Again, hit show, and it's out on the board. Using these properties, I can edit and create any scoreboard template look I want. For instance, I can take an image go back to my documents, and go to a folder I have for scoreboard elements. I'm going to upload this textured image as a background instead of a plain red box. I can resize it to whatever size I want. I can double click on it to resize the content within those parameters. Drag, resize, resize. So we'll make this again two ninety height one thirty. width of 800 and the x of 0. All I have to do is and now I have a textured background. But you see this is in front of the, uh, the text I have already created. In order to send that back all I have to do is select it and send it to back. And now I've got a textured background behind my score template. 
Using this, you can create an image in Photoshop to create whatever background you want. Import it into ProPresenter scoreboard. Add your text boxes for your data links, and you'll have a completely custom, one-off score template look. For now, I'm going to go back to my standard scoreboard, since it is complete. And this will give you a better representation of how the system works. That is your scoreboard layer. Again, goes directly above graphics. The last layer is going to be overlays. To create an overlay, I'm going to click on the overlay button. It'll open up either as a separate window that I can resize and drag over here, or it will open up right here above my scoring interface. In order to pop it out as its own window, I want to hit this square box up here in the right, and it will pop it out. I like to drag it over here underneath my output because this portion of the software is not used. To create and edit overlays, I'm going to go to its own pencil icon. And this will look exactly like the scoreboard configurator because it's the same. To create a new overlay, I can hit the plus button. I can create content, drag and expand boxes, colorize, import images, delete them out, add text boxes. But I can also add a live video, a live video stream. In clicking this live video, it will bring up input device settings. I have an Ultra Studio HD Mini hooked to my computer, and I'm bringing a camera feed in at 720p60. This could be a laptop, this could be a camera, an instant replay system such as vMix, anything that will bring in a live video stream you just have to know the frame rate and resolution that will come in. I'll select OK, and it will bring in a box here. I can resize that box to whatever size I want. So I could put it at 0, 0, which will again put it to the top left corner. Make it 516 wide and 290 tall will be my exact 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I can then name it Live Video and I will have created a brand new Live Video input. But let's say I want to also have a full screen Live Video input for movie night or something else. I'm going to create another one by hitting the plus button, grab my live video input again, hit OK, and this one I'm going to start at 0, 0, make it 800 wide, and 420 tall. I'll title this one Live Full, and now if I X out, you will see I have two live video inputs over here on the left. Just select which one you want to play, and it will come up. At this point, I have ProPresenter scoreboard set up. Create as many playlists as I want. I can create as many macros as I want, and create as many overlays as I want. To run game, you just select the names of your teams and score from the scoring console. To ensure you're connected to the scoring console, you're going to want to go to ProPresenter Scoreboard and select Settings. Go to the Communications tab, and you're going to want to see your console right here. I'm using an All-American 8000 console. 
it is connected to my computer via a serial device. And I see the green connected, meaning that it is talking to the device. If I see it red like this, all I have to do is hit the connect button and it should come up green if the console is still connected to the computer. And that's it. That's your introduction to ProPresenter Scoreboard. Thank you for coming. We'll have additional deep dive videos into all of these departments. Thank you again.